everybody, Danielle Hargenrader here, founder of Diabetes Dominator Coaching and best-selling author of Unleash Your Inner Diabetes Dominator. Really excited to bring you today an episode of This Is How I Do Diabetes, where I'm gonna show you how I change my Omnipod insulin pump. I spent 22 out of my 26 years with diabetes on manual daily injections, and I really enjoyed that. However, once I learned about the Omnipod pump and the fact that it was tubeless, I said to myself, well, I'll see if I like it, they give you a trial. If I don't like it, I'll go back to manual injections and if I do like it I'll stick with it that was four years ago and I've been with the Omnipod ever since it's the only pump I've ever tried I love it and I'm gonna show you how I change it on this episode of this is how I do diabetes let's go check it out Alright, let's get right into it. First, a couple of things about the Omnipod insulin pump. It is a tubeless pump, which means you just have your PDM, personal diabetes manager, that you carry around with you, and there's no tubing that attaches you to the pump. The insulin itself is actually inside the pump and does not come from the PDM. The Omnipod will actually continue delivering insulin for three days, three 24-hour periods, plus eight hours. After those that three 24-hour periods is up and then eight hours, your pump will no longer deliver insulin to you. I have heard through my clients and friends in the diabetes community that there are other pumps that even though you're supposed to change the site, it will still continue to deliver insulin if you don't. However, the Omnipod will not and it will let you know by screeching at you, which is both annoying but also very helpful because when there is fluid exchange, like through a pump, the insulin going into your skin, if it's in for more than three days or so, the risk for infection does go up. So it's really good to have a loud reminder when it's time to change your pump. So this is the personal diabetes manager. And the first thing that we're gonna do to change the pump is we're gonna toggle through the screens and then going to go to more actions. I'm actually just gonna try to do this over here so people can see it. More actions, change pod is the first thing in there and then confirm. So it's going to communicate with the pod that's on my body right now to tell it, hey, stop delivering insulin. So I'm gonna back up here. While it does that, it beeped. It let me know that it has communicated. And once that happens, I'm going to peel my old pod off. So this is generally where I wear my pods. I also wear them on my thighs. But for me, I just rip it right off. Now, I have seen other people change their pod and they use like a little solvent or something to bring up the adhesive. But for me, I have no, my skin is not super sensitive and I can just pull it off. There's no pain, there's no issue. And generally after that, just to be clean and sterile, I wipe the whole spot off where the old pod was and then continue on. So the next thing that we're gonna do is hopefully not drop everything on the floor. This is a new packet, a new pod site, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up, peel the backing off, kind of put it all out on the table so it comes with a syringe like this that's separated which you just screw on like that and also a new a new pod right so the first thing I do before anything else is I draw out my insulin so here's my Novolog and alcohol swab right bring back I bring back the syringe with the air then I inject the air and then generally speaking this will draw out on its own. I push out any air bubbles and just pull it out for about, I go for three 24 hour periods plus eight hours. I put about 110 units in there just to be safe, uh, make sure that I don't run out before the time is up. Okay, draw that out. The next thing you do is you bring back up your personal diabetes manager says pod deactivated, remove and discard the pod and then press next. So press next. And then it asks you, would you like to activate another pod now? And I'm going to say yes. So now it's going to tell me to fill this pod with insulin. So I'm gonna come up here and show you guys how this works. So this is the back of the pod. And what you do is you inject the insulin directly. I'm actually gonna bring this over here so it continues to communicate with it. You inject the insulin directly into the pod until you hear two beeps. There they are. Take that out. And then you hit next. So for me, I put them down next to each other. That was a tip that I learned from somebody in the diabetes online community. And unfortunately, I can't remember who was kind enough 
to give me this tip when I first got the pod, just like when I change anything, do anything new, I always reach out to the diabetes online community. I put a post up and say, hey, who has had experience with this? What is your experience? Can you give me any advice? Can you give me any tips? And someone told me that it, it's helpful to lay the pod down next to the PDM while it's priming. So right now it's priming and we're just gonna wait. But in the meantime, I'm gonna prepare the site that I'm gonna put the new pod on. So I like, just like when I change my Dexcom, I really like to saturate the area with alcohol, which helps get all the oils off of your skin and helps it stick better. And since this only has to stick for three days, I don't use any skin tack or any Griff Grips or anything like that because simply because I don't need to. I have no issues with the pod coming off ever before the three days is up, no matter whether I'm swimming or doing anything. So prep the site, give it like a real good swab down, right? So I don't know if you heard that beep, but it beeped two times and it told me, hey, we're ready. So now this is the pod. I'm just going to peel this backing off, which is really you have to, at first it scared me, but you have to be kind of violent with it. Pop it off. This is the thing that blocks the cannula before you're ready to use it. Now the pod or the PDM is saying, remove that. If the cannula is sticking out already, make sure you discard this pump and, or this pod and use a new one. So I'm gonna hit next because the cannula is not sticking out. And then it tells you to remove the adhesive backing, which I'm gonna do right now. So you just remove the backing. This is the pump. And then I'm simply going to place it right there. And the other thing too that you'll notice is that I'm putting this on directly over a tattoo. I have heard so many questions and opinions being um, shared in the diabetes online community regarding whether it is safe or effective or if insulin can get in or if it ruins your artwork or, or any number of things. I have found over the last four years that I have had zero problems with my tattoos and putting pumps and CGMs right through them. That's my own opinion, my own experience. I don't know what other people have experienced, but for me, that's how it's worked. So now it's on and then it tells you when you're ready, press next. So press next and then it's going to say press start to begin. So press start, right? And now it's going to start. So what I like to do is I just pinch up a little bit, just a little bit. The thing that you probably can't hear though, and for those people, there it went. It just kind of uh, clicked in and it put the cannula in for me. And for some people it can be really nerve wracking because what happens is as it's getting ready to insert the cannula, you hear these clicks and it's like click, click, click. And you know that the cannula is just going to come whenever it's ready. Um, so what I do is I just kind of like, usually if I'm not making a video about it, I'll just breathe in like this and I'll just, when I start hearing the clicking and I'll just go. And by the time my breath has come out, the cannula is in, I didn't even feel it. And it kind of is just like a mental trick is to do the deep breathing just because the clicking itself is kind of nerve wracking. The actual cannula going in, I don't feel it at all, but it's the clicking and the waiting for it to go in that's a little like mentally unnerving. So that's kind of, I just take a deep breath in and deep breath out. And now this is asking, it says, it says pot is active, is cannula properly inserted? And the way that you know that is there's a little pink arrow and you guys probably can't see it, but once the cannula is in, you can see the pink arrow through the clear plastic. If you don't see that pink arrow, then the cannula probably has not inserted right and you should change the pod. But this has, so I'm just gonna tell it, yes, the cannula is inserted properly. And now it just goes back to what it was doing before. It's still telling me how much insulin on board I had before I changed it and everything basal rates are set and nothing has to be changed. And that's pretty much it. That's a full pod change. It doesn't take a lot of time. I find it extremely convenient. And for me being athletic, I just really like not being connected to tubing. So I hope that was something that you enjoyed. And if you are thinking about trying an Omnipod or any pump at all, I'm just showing you Omnipod because that's what I prefer. But I think each individual one of us living with diabetes has different needs and desires and we have different things that work for us. So I know that the pump companies out there that exist, all of them do offer trials. So if you call Omnipod and say, hey, I would really like to trial the Omnipod. And I'm just using this as an example. You could be any other pump company and say, I'd like to trial it and see if I like it. Generally, they will send you a trial so that and you wouldn't put insulin in it or anything. You would just wear it for a few days to see how you liked wearing it, to see if it fit into your life, to see how generally it feels for you. And 
if you like it, you use it. If you don't, you go back to what you were doing before, but it's nice to have options and it's really nice when the companies are easy to work with and they do what they can to help you facilitate that with your doctor and everything else. So with that all in mind, again, I really hope that you've enjoyed this. I'd love to hear from you. What kind of pump do you use? Do you love your pump? What pumps have you used that you didn't like, that you do like? What tips do you use with the Omnipod that might help someone else that's watching this? If you comment underneath that uh, might help them get through it easier or quicker or less pain, even though I don't think it's very painful, but some people do. But either way, comment below, let me know how you do diabetes with your pump or with your manual daily injections, because again, we all have our own ways of taking care of our diabetes and that's awesome. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of This Is How I Do Diabetes.